My OS 5 inch gauge Stevenson's rocket. This is part 2. A compressed air test in the workshop. This engine has lived in this glass case for 21 years, according to an engraved brass plaque on the baseboard. And it's never been steamed, and I don't know if it's going to run anyway. I would think that the builder must have run the engine when it was first built. Here it is in the workshop, and I've connected a compressed air line. And I've connected the air line to the pipe that comes from the blowdown valve. So now I can get pressure into the boiler. And when I open the regulator, uh, nothing happens. Well, apart from a hissing noise, and as I turn the wheel, I can feel a lot of resistance, but I feel the resistance even when the air is turned off. With around 50 pounds per square inch of compressed air in the boiler, I opened the regulator and the wheel moved a very small amount. The suspension on the engine is very free, but everything else isn't so free. When I try and turn the wheels, there's a lot of resistance. I think it's time to get serious. I'm going to disconnect the tender from the engine so I can work on the engine. There are three connections to undo from the tender, the first of them is the hand pump, the second pipe feeds the crosshead pump and the third pipe is the water bypass valve to allow adjustment of the water feed to the boiler from the crosshead pump. If you find yourself working on a steam engine and you don't know what the parts do, try and take some time to find out. This is a special spring clip that holds the connecting pin between the engine and tender in place. Now it's much easier to work on the engine, because I'll be looking underneath the engine and moving it around and rotating it, and it's very difficult when it's held to a tender by a pin. I had a look at this engine before I started filming, and the first thing I did was to disconnect the oil pump drive, so I could manually pump some oil into the engine cylinders. There was a layer of very dried up oil in the bottom of the mechanical lubricator, so apart from adding some new oil to it, I also added some WD-40. Always good stuff to use for freeing any stuck parts, but please bear in mind WD-40 is very good stuff, but it's not a very good lubricant, so never rely on it as a lubricant. This is quite a fine scale model engine, and the two connecting rods are cast items with bushes. And the last thing I want to do is break these, so I'm removing them because I need to turn the wheel to see A, what the valve events are, and B, to find out why the wheels don't turn very well. This is a simple but fiddly job, but in no time at all the first connecting rod is removed from the engine. As I mentioned in the first video, I've been after one of these models for many years, and when I saw this at the steam workshop, Simon said, well, we haven't even looked at it, it's only just come in. But I wasn't bothered about that, I just wanted to get my hands on it, and here I am taking it apart. I'm pleased it didn't work straight away, because if it had have done, there wouldn't have been a video series about it. And if this Stevenson's rocket model doesn't work, there are probably quite a few in the world that also don't work, so this will be a good reference video for anyone wanting to work on an OS 5 inch gauge Stevenson's rocket. Here's a close up of one end of the connecting rod, and you can see the bush, and it's a proper phosphor bronze bush too. So I don't lose the parts, I put them back in the connecting rod before I put the connecting rod in the box. So now I can turn the wheels. The eccentric arrangement on this engine is a bit bizarre really. There are two eccentrics, and a lever in the cab that positions the eccentrics either left or right or in the middle. Both of these eccentrics are free to spin on the axle, and depending on the setting of the lever in the cab depends which eccentric locks into the peg on the part that's fastened to the wheels. This valve gear is cleverer than I first thought. It uses quite a complicated linkage of levers on what are basically split shafts, and as you can see the mounting for one of these shafts is loose. As I move the levers, you can see what's happening. The valve is moving, but I shouldn't be able to move these levers. Unfortunately though, the linkage is further down and not very tight, and they spin fairly free. And at first, I thought this was going to be a simple job. How very wrong I was. This is underneath, and I've got an Allen key in the Allen bolt. I really hate Allen head bolts on model steam engines, but I don't mind it on this one, because that's the way OS made it, and it's good enough for OS, it's good enough for me. The linkages were very slack, and once I tightened them up, it started to do something very different. As I turn the wheel, the piston rod goes back and forth. I think it's time to make a more permanent air connection, so I fitted an O-ring to my airline blower to hold the trigger fully open. By rotating the front wheel, as you can see, what I do notice is the valve timing is miles out, absolutely miles out. First of all, I need to make sure everything works, then I will set the valve timing. 
It's worth mentioning that I'm only using very low air pressure for this. I don't want to use full boiler pressure because I don't want the crosshead to damage the mounting frame, which it may do with high boiler pressure. In this clip you can clearly see the shaft that runs across the back of the engine is split. At first I thought it was all one shaft, but no, it's two shafts, and each of the shafts have linkages connected to each of the eccentrics, one for forward and one for reverse. But unfortunately, if any part of the linkages move out of adjustment by forcing the mechanism, then it's not going to work at all. And none of these linkages are keyed to the shafts, they're just held in place by a simple clamp assembly, which in turn is tightened onto the shaft with one small allen bolt. As you can clearly see from this clip, I've turned the engine round and what's going on here. The slide valves are moving okay, and air has been admitted to each side of the cylinders. But the piston on this side seems very reluctant to move, it's very tight. So why is this? Let me examine the possibilities. Is the gland nut too tight? No, I've tried that. Are the slide bars not in the right position? No, they're fine. I do not recommend this unless you really know what you're doing. I'm using a very small hammer and I'm using a piece of mahogany to tap the crosshead and see if I can unstick the piston. All the clicking you can hear is the other side. This is the side that's having the problem. To the left of this image you can see something moving. That's my hand moving the oil pump. I'm attempting to pump as much of the oil and WD-40 mixture as I can into the cylinders in an attempt to unstick the piston. And I'm also flooding everywhere around this cylinder with oil. Now the valves are working correctly, I've reconnected the linkage to the oil pump. So that is working all right, it should be pumping oil into the cylinders, but I don't think there's much oil getting through to the piston at this side. In the bottom of the lubricator, as I mentioned earlier, was some very gummy oil, some 21 year old oil that was left in there. And as an educated guess, I think that's one of the problems. Maybe some viewers are thinking, well, why bother with it, just stick it back in the glass case. But no, form follows function. If it doesn't work and it's in a glass case, that is not good. I will think on this further and in the meantime I'll play with the whistle. And that's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.